Podcast City Network. Thank you for tuning in on this episode of the Everett Lee Show. But before we get on with the guest onto the program today, there's a couple things I do want to mention that you can help out with supporting the Everett Lee Show. If you're looking to start a podcast and already have a podcast and you're looking for an affordable podcasting hosting site, Podbeam is your number one choice. Podbeam offers statistics with in-depth analytics to manage your podcast needs. Use the promo code podbeam.com slash PB sign up and get a free month off. That's podbeam.com slash PB sign up to get a free month off and see why 1,500 episodes have been shared all over the world in the past 11 years with over 3,000 subscribers that have chose Podbeam as their number one hosting site. And if you're looking to get into advertising, Podbeam advertising. You'll get a hundred dollars off advertising when you sign up as a sponsorship over on podbeam.com slash pro slash PB sign up. That's podbeam.com slash pro slash PB sign up. You're listening to the Everett Lee Show. Welcome everyone to the Everett Lee Show. I'm the Everett Lee. Technical difficulty right now. I don't have a camera. So I'm going back to my roots on this episode of the Everett Lee Show. Straight audio. So that way me and my guests can kick back. And uh, you won't get to see how messed up my hair is. Or how messed up his hair is. (laughs) But he's wearing a hat. (laughs) (laughs) My guest on this episode is independent wrestler and the knockout world heavyweight champion for knockout wrestling i want to welcome to the program venom how you doing good. yes what's up home skillet what's up i'm good uh, it's all as well on this side of town that's good how about yourself? i'm i'm pretty good just uh just enjoyed a day off today ran around with my wife we we ran errands and we did some we did some stuff and it was it was good being able to like enjoy the day and not have to worry about too much of anything daughter was in daycare and it was just me and her we had a day to ourselves where we got to go around and just do whatever <laughs> loved it and, and enjoy and enjoy the day that's what's up that's what's up. yeah i don't get that too often Nah, you you're pretty yeah. busy nah you're pretty busy. What do you? Yeah, I'll what do tell you, you what, man. What do you do on your uh, shoot job, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I do. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, we contracted through DOT, Department of Transportation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we repaired guardrails, sidewalks. We cut all all the major highways, trim trees, uh, run from dead, run from snakes, um, wild hogs, you know, stuff like that. Not, nothing too serious. Oh yeah, yeah, work. City work, basically, right? Pretty much. Uh, pretty much, but pretty we're much. just on a bigger scale. Yeah. 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 And, I and dealing, dealing with the elements. <laughs> yeah, I know you mentioned before you had to deal with heat. Yeah. Yeah. It was 100 plus today. Damn, man, that's crazy. Did you get yeah. any of that rain? Oh, it rained somewhere. Yeah, it will. It rained over this way here in Daytona. It it rained over here today. And I, I, I ain't get nothing. I got nothing but heat and, and maybe a sharp, a shade darker. <laughs> <laughs> it's, man, talk, talking about heat, man. That June twentieth show for Unfinished Business two there from Knockout. God, man, Woo. that that was hot. That that was hot, man. Ooh. That damn ring, man. I I feel for you guys, man, because they had to spray it down in between every match. Is there? Yeah, they they must have missed my match, cause they I I got burnt, literally burnt from the mat on my shoulder. Jeez, that's that's crazy, yeah. man. That it was hot. Yeah, it was hot when I left. When I left that day, I got in the car, and the I I kid you not, the temperature said one hundred and one. Ooh. One oh one. I, I, I started the match at I started the match at two thirty five, weighing two thirty five, and I was two fifteen when we were, by the time we were done. 
<laughs> oh man, that's great. Nah. <laughs> yeah, it was a scorching day. <laughs> yeah, it it definitely it definitely was it definitely was a, a scorcher. It, it's just it was so it's so damn hot here. I mean, it's it's summer, and you figure with this pandemic, the heat. Do, I don't know if you remember the hearing about like, oh, the heat kills the virus. Okay, this is hot yeah. in the summer. You f- you figured? I guess everyone right. thought if they got out in the sun, it'd probably kill the virus. <laughs> it's, it's to me, it seemed like it's spreading even more. Mm-hmm. From uh, I don't know, like gremlins or something. Don't put it in the heat; it's gonna multiply. <laughs> <laughs> that is, well, I don't get it, man. Yeah, that is that is crazy. Now, do you do you wear do you when you go out when you go out to the store and stuff? Do you wear a mask like everybody else does? Oh, to the store, yes, mm-hmm. yes, I'm, you do. I'm, I'm fully covered. You're fully yeah, covered. absolutely. I got I got my um my boss and mask off. Of, uh, actually, I got a couple of them right here right now. Here's one of them I wear. I got it off of Instagram. Oh, nice. You know, and then here's another one, the essay, and then I here's another one. Also, also where these two at work? I like that one right there with the skull, with the yeah. skull right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that looks that looks cool. I like that. I just have just a regular. You should, you should see the looks I get from people on the highways when I'm wearing that. <laughs> when you walk down the aisle, do they like step way far over, or they try to get away? <laughs> it's like it's like the Red Sea part, buddy. It's like, like oh. <laughs> especially kids. Kids grab hope to their parents, real all tight and stuff. Yeah. And so, so I'll sometimes I go pull it down a little bit. It's just to me, it's just nah, but it's crazy. <laughs> Well, most definitely, I wear it. Yeah, it, it's it, it's crazy because my my job, I I do stuff with the with the uh, local with the local hospital here, and what I have to do, I I have to wear it. We we have to wear it, and I I have no issue wearing it because I'm protecting myself, and I'm also say, for example, if I we were if I ran into you out in out in public or where I'm working. I'm protecting you too yeah. because I may have a cold. I don't want you to get it, and you don't. You wearing exactly. a mask, you know. We don't want to give any. You know, it, it's just protecting ourselves, and it just blows my mind how people just get all upset about it. Oh, you're making me wear a mask. You wear the mask, and someone pull, pulled up a good point. When you get in a car, what's the first thing you do before you start the car? You put a seatbelt on, right? You put the seatbelt seat on. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, first step, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you jump in the car, you put the seatbelt on, you start it. And it's just, it's become one of those things, I guess, where it's, for for now, it's going to be one of those, you know, normal day things. You, when you get up in the morning, you put your pants, or you put your underwear, pants, shirt, socks, shoes on, and your mask. You know, it's just one extra. So, so, so we're supposed to wear underwear? <laughs> Oh, I missed that one. Oh, man. No wonder. No wonder I got a rash. No, let me stop. <laughs> no, don't tell me you're free balling there, man. Oh, man. No. I didn't need to know that. No, not anymore. <laughs> those, those were high school days. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't need to know you are free balling there. <laughs> now, you ain't free balling when you're in the ring, are you? <laughs> Hell no! <laughs> no, those babies are tough. <laughs> nice and snug. <laughs> Little boy. <laughs> wow. That man hurt, believe it or not. That man hurt. Yeah, man. Sorry, I had to make it funny, man. I had to get you, I had to get you to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you did. I love it. I love it. That's that's why that's why I love love talking with you, man. It because I know we last week not to spoil anything because by the time this comes out, that um, the you were the guest on uh, the second episode of Double Down. I hate to say that, but um, I'm not, I know spoiler alert <laughs> because because yeah. it, it's gonna it's gonna be good. I know whenever they release that here, it's 
people's going to enjoy it, and they're going to enjoy the conversation and stuff yeah. that we had on that right there for Knockout Wrestling. And people's going to enjoy this yeah, one here so. with the with the conversations <laughs> and stuff we're going to get into. I mean, it's starting off really well, you know, besides the technicality yeah. with the technical difficulty. No camera, <laughs> straight audio. I prefer it like this because this is how I started out when I started doing this here. You, you ever All sit right, back... You ever sit back every once in a while and look back of like where you started in professional wrestling to where you're at now? You ever you ever sit there and take yeah. a moment for yourself? I never thought it would would be the way it is. Yeah, like actually, uh, just last this past weekend, I'm sitting back reflecting. I found some of my old pictures from when I was training. First started training, and I'm like, wow, like. It's it's I'm in awe still like I'm still in awe. Yeah, yeah. When looking back at some pictures, I found some old pictures recently. Back when I was like in high school, I was like, "Wow, I can't believe I look like that compared to where I'm at, <laughs> now, how I looked, man." I had much more lo- more hair than I did back, you know, back uh, then. I can, I yeah, mean, yeah. Back then, I had more hair than what I do now. I rarely have any hair now. And it's like, where the hell did the time go? <laughs> Man, listen, it's uh, a lot of it's a blur. It's like, wait, and that's not because, only because I was just moving so fast. It never was a really big party or anything like that. It's just like, just constantly. I, I grew up really fast. Put it that way. Yeah, I grew up really fast. Mm-hmm. Oh, like missed a lot of that. Where where'd you grow up? But I don't regret it. You don't regret it. <laughs> that's that's good. No, 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 no. I mean, I actually grew up uh two houses from Warren Sapp. Then I moved to uh Mount Dora and then I grew up in Mount Dora and I w- actually went to school to Mount Dora High School. Uh-huh. Um home of the Hurricanes. Played uh played uh four year football starter in football, um, ran track, four year starter in track, so and I dabbled, dabbled a little bit in college, uh, Akron University. Then um, I went to JUCO in Mississippi, yeah, uh, Gulf Coast, Mississippi, uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast. That's what it was. Yeah. And then I was like, ah. So then, then wanted to become an entertainer. So, and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Growing, growing up watching, growing up wa- watching wrestling. I know um, you, mm-hmm. you said you grew up watching like the uh, like uh, WCW back back in the day. WCW, NWA. Um, who who caught your eye back when you were watching it when you were growing up? Who who stood out to you the most? That you're like, wow, I love what I see. Well, I'm gonna tell you what stood out the most to me. Um, actually, it was Harley Race. And it was because of the hatred that I had for him. And um, the Funk Brothers versus the Briscoes. I hated them so much. I wanted the Briscoes to kill them because they were so dirty. That's what got me. You know, they are the ones that actually drew me into wrestling. Oh. Harley Race. Watching those guys. Yeah. Uh, I hated that man. But he was so great as real. Like, nah, he was so great. But I hated him. Yeah, he- but I you know, I love him, man. Yeah, Harley Harley was great. I mean, just just the stuff to yes. you, that he did. Uh, one 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 title in WWE that I like is the United States Championship because of the history and who held that. He was the first guy to hold that title there, the U.S. title there. Uh, in WWE, but, um, WCW because that's I think, oh, okay. I think the title. I'm gonna have to look it up. I know it. It probably started, I think, in NWA, and then WCW got a hold of it, and then they, and then it went on into where it's at now. And he was he was one of the first ones there. He 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 did he had he he was like real. What you saw in the ring was yeah. what you saw outside the ring too, man. Yeah, right. he was vicious. Yeah, I hated him. I hated him, but I, I I I also wanted to be like Booker T. You know, um, oh yeah, that, that was one of my like when I when I started training, I, I like watched his. I can't do near a third of the stuff that he does, but 
Like, yeah. and he's like phenomenal, like phenomenal. I think he kind of didn't get exactly everything he deserved, but still, you know, his work spoke for himself. So, right, I mean, a lot of times that's all that matters. Yeah, phenomenal. Booker Booker T. We're. I was talking with. Uh, I was talking with a couple friends today about Booker T. His, his name came up, and just his vast knowledge of wrestling is just. He's old school, man. He's old school, and his yeah. school where he trains is old school. And they say you do something he don't like, he'll he'll tell you. He'll let you know, man. He he definitely let you know. That's the best. I mean, that's the best way to be. You know. I, I'm I'm like this. Be honest with me and don't sugarcoat Jack, because you know I'll never get better if you can if if you have a yes man in your corner. I don't want a yes man. I want a man. No, you didn't do that right. You need to do this. You need to do that. I always like um uh, I have a couple of people that I go to and ask them like how did the match look? You know, I, uh, Jeff Stone. He was in uh, he he's a WCW old school guy, but well, he ain't too old school. But he was in WCW. Jeff Stone, and he comes to all of my matches, and I go to him, and he critique them, and he tell me what I need to fix or whatever, and I take it. I take criticism very well, yeah. very well. That's that's good. That's good. Where where'd you go? Where'd you start training at? Where'd where'd you go to get trained at? And who trained you? Uh, I, I, um, it was just I, Mr. Al Hartman made rest in peace. Uh, he used to run shows over here in Leesburg at the Boys and Girls Club, uh, FWF, and um, I was there faithfully. In the, uh, I was a spectator fan slash fan at first. I always had a mouthpiece. At that time, I was like 245, maybe 235, but I was a little bit more cut. Yeah. And he was like, hey, son, you ever thought about wrestling? And I was like, all my life. He said, well, my, um, Dalton Kelly has my ring at, at his house. He keeps it there. Why don't you go over there and train? And Dalton Kelly, uh, Jason Sapp, uh, a, dude, a guy named Jack Mahoney, took me back there and beat the crap out of me, taught me some moves, and <laughs> the rest is history. Here I am. Wow. Held, num- yeah. Held <laughs> numerous titles everywhere I've gone. Uh, just an all-around good people person. But, yeah, Dalton Kelly was my main main trainer i mean he did a great job and and he protected me as well yeah you know, when i first started out yeah he protected me out That's... i think maybe my first six seven matches was against him oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah he made sure when do you do you remember your first match when you you doing your first match how how was that for you? Just it's like here it is. This is it, man. <laughs> when you got oh out my there. God. Oh <laughs> man, I was a I was a bag of nerves, bro. I couldn't man, I couldn't remember spots. My knees were shaking. Probably pissed myself. Man, I was it was the most one of the most intense feelings and in just when you come out the curtains, you're like I just like Everything got quiet, and that's like the spotlight was just on me. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, it was an <laughs> awesome feeling at the time. One of the most most scariest feelings I ever had in my life. Yeah. Was, yes. Oh my god. Oh. Matter of fact, I think it was against Jack Mahoney, one of my trainers. Uh-huh. I was so nervous, man. He he carried me through the whole match. Of course, he carried me. Right. Because I was I was just like overwhelmed. It was very overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's good. That's good that they did. They, they took care of you in the ring there, and from the, from there on, did you? What what promotion was it that you started out started out in, and then where did you transition after that to the other promotions? Oh, man, oh, you taking me back? <laughs> um, I, well, like I say, FWF with Mister Al Hardiman, may he rest in peace. He gave me my my first shot to, to, to become a wrestler, mm-hmm. to train actually to, to be a work a worker. Yeah. I started did some shows with him. Then I did a couple shows with uh, a guy named Thumper Chapman, down in Arvindale, Lakeland area. Did some stuff with him. Um, he he took care of me too. I don't know why he liked me, but he did. You know, um, uh, South Lake Extreme. Uh, I did some uh, MFW in Sanford. Oh my gosh, I, I've been to Georgia, uh, GPW in Georgia, 
Eastman somewhere. Oh man, I, I, I've been around. I, I started 2003, so I've been around. Yeah. So yeah, I've been around. But I, like I say, Tampa, our house of Lucha, a good friend of mine, um, Poppy Nevier, Nevier, so how do you say it? He a pretty boy Poppy, that's what I call it. <laughs> yeah, um, did some stuff down there, uh, Port St. Lucie, Newport Richie. I mean, I've been around, I've been around the block. Like Tupac say, I get around. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, man. I, uh, uh, I like it. What um, when being trained and doing matches, what like the early influences, like you said, Harley Race. Did you incorporate any of that into into your ring work there? Any like anything that you remember from like Harley Race? Well, honestly, I, I would just like like I say. I hated him because of how he was, but honestly, I didn't start becoming into my own until I was like seven, eight years into the business, you know, because like I say, I was still learning, still, and I'm still learning after all this time, but uh, I didn't really start becoming into my own until maybe 10 years ago. Yeah. And then by that time, like I say, I was heavily influenced by guys like Booker T, Mark Henry, uh, 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 New Jack, uh, guys like the um, Sting. Uh, who else was some of my other favorites? Uh, oh, uh, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. They were, that's when I started coming into my. I was like, oh, I can be like that. So that's <laughs> when I really started coming into into my own the WCW days with the NWO. I was like, oh, okay. So it started. My, my brain was like, bing, 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 bing. Uh, and then now you got Venom up today. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. You're talking about Attitude Era, Monday Night Wars, man. The Monday Night Wars with WCW, Nitro, yeah. and uh, Monday Night Raw. That that was yeah. some great, great stuff right there at the, the with the '90s, man. It just coming into that <laughs> there, I remember growing up watching wrestling as a kid and. From like ninety ninety one till about ninety eight, that eight years, I seven eight years, I didn't watch wrestling. I had yeah. friends that watched it that would like you know tell me stuff here and there. But when I started getting back into it, when the Monday Night Wars was happening, I I was yeah. like Hulk Hogan's bad. What? What the heck happened? And then it's like NWO. Oh my god! I, I was like, oh yeah. my god. I, I, I couldn't believe that, you know, and then it's like he's not in WWF no more. It's like, no, he's he's over in WCW and then I'm watching this and then all of a sudden I'm seeing all this new this talent I've never seen before. And then I'm seeing this guy over in WCW named like Diamond Dallas Page. I'm like, I like that guy, man. It's like he's cool. Yeah. And then you had all the t talent over there that I grew up with. And then, well, what's WWF doing? And all of a sudden it's like. You get this guy running around there with a shaved head with a goatee called Stone Cold Steve Austin beating the crap out of Vince right. McMahon. I'm like, what is this? And Love then you it. Got, you get Love D it. DX out there. It's like, who's DX? It's like, what the heck? And then you start Love. getting into it, and it's like Undertaker, he, like, changed. And just, it's like, wow, yeah. Monday nights, man. First hour, Nitro, 9 o'clock, flip. Over, uh, brawl. Added, yep, yeah. brawl. Next morning, take the VCR tape, put it in, watch the last two hours of Nitro. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. I did. Um, I can remember specifically. I used to work. Uh, we uh, on a um, for Coca Cola. I worked a day shift. It was day shift was from seven to three, which was fine. Three thirty four o'clock. Night. The night shift was three thirty to eleven. Boy, I gave them people a hell because i was like especially on monday nights i mean tuesdays through friday i'm, I'm cool but look monday nights we got to make some kind of rent you bro i mean because i would i would literally be upset from eight o'clock to eleven o'clock because i had to work that's how <laughs> that's how intense into it i was right it was crazy man i'm like do i make money get or get fired and, and watch raw well, I'm trying to tell you, boy, that that, that raw and uh, WCW 
Woo, it was pretty close, but I, you know, I had to make that money because I had a, uh, my daughter was born that year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but it was, whew, it was a tough decision. Put it yeah. that way, it's a tough decision. <laughs> Speaking of your daughter, I at the June twentieth show, he she came out there with you to the ring there. Oh that, yeah, that's what, my baby girl. Yeah, it's your baby girl. How how many how many kids do you have? Uh three. Three? Three. Yeah. yeah. I I just I have one myself. I have a three year old. She's she's a handful right now, man. <laughs> uh, and all I can say is enjoy them while they're small. Enjoy them. That's the best. Just like I tell them with high school, enjoy high school because that's the best time of your life. So enjoy them while they're small. I'm fortunate enough to have my daughter it's interested in wrestling the way that I am, and she has that drive and motivation to want to be out there. So I have her in my corner because, I mean, like, man, it's like, you don't get no better. <laughs> I'm the luckiest dad in the world. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. That was cool. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that when you when you came out and you had your daughter with you. I was like, that's that's awesome, you know, having her, it, yeah. you know, come out there with you. And she – have you um, – she's showing a lot of interest in it too right now, ain't she? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Most definitely. Um, she's, she, she's training not as much as she needs to be or because of this COVID thing, but yeah, I mean, she works out on her own. I mean, she, she'll FaceTime me. Hey dad, guess what I'm doing? I'm like, I'm looking at you in the gym, Katie. Oh yeah. I'm training. <laughs> yeah. I'm training, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. <laughs> like on her own. She's not like, she has a fire, fire and desire for it. So, I mean, I held off for a long time from it because I mean, right. it's, it can be very painful. The injuries are real, people, and, and every worker that's listening to this can attest to that. The injuries are real, but um, so, and she's my baby girl. So I'm like, I don't know if I want you to go through all of that. Like, yeah, but I, if I can count on one person to be there at those shows with me, it's her. So hey, why not? Yeah, why not? That's that's amazing, man. That is. Speaking speaking of injuries, what injuries have you sustained during during your time as a professional wrestler? What uh, what injuries have <laughs> that have, have you uh, endured? <laughs> what? Uh, I dislocated a wrist during a match in the middle of a match. I dislocated my right wrist. I torn. I haven't actually torn it all the way, but I had a slight pull or tear in my ACL. Uh, sprained ankle, numerous concussions, uh, dislocated shoulder, a rotator cuff, uh, back problems. Let me see. Uh, I mean, should I keep going or you want me to stop? <laughs> <laughs> you, it's you, crazy. It's like. You've got a lot. You, you've had a lot of injuries. Yeah, walk, <laughs> yes, walk, walking is a. Uh, challenge after a 20 minute sit down on a car ride walking is a serious challenge <laughs> but you know I, I love it this i mean and, and i once i make that decision because that's one thing about me i'm going all in or i'm not going to go at all so yeah you know i made that decision and so i know what, well i found out what came with it afterwards i can't say i know what came with it but i found out uh -huh. but hey that's what i want to do i love it i'm very passionate about it still to this day so i'll take that yeah, I'll take that. That's that. That's that's ama amazing. That you know you all all the stuff that you you've went through with with injuries, but um, you you come back from it. There, you you come back and matches that you've had with with a lot of talent. Who who stands out in your mind the most of having a really good match with? You know, when you get in the ring with that person, you're like. It, it, the roof's gonna blow off because we we know what we're we're gonna the, people are gonna get, leave happy when when they see us in the oh. ring here. Who who comes to mind there? I mean, I mean, I have a couple, but on the top, first and foremost, it would be Dalton Kelly. Once again, the guy that trained me. Our chemistry. All we have to do is look at each other, brother. We ain't gotta say nothing. We don't have to no, no kind of gigs, no nothing. We just look at each other and we go and. I can say we've had people come from out of state to to watch us work against each other just off of promos alone. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, and, and yeah, we, 
And our main thing is, uh, before we walk out that curtain, we say, I love you, brother. I'm sorry. And I say, I love you too, bro. I'm sorry. And we walk out that curtain, and, man, we get it on, bro. I, <laughs> as a matter <laughs> of fact, um, one of our friends, um, his name is Jason. Jason Sapp. Uh, his wife, after every match or every show, like when we're done, she'll walk up to me and say, hey, Venom, here you go. And give me like two excitement because she know my head is pounding. <laughs> She's automatic. Here you go. Because <laughs> I mean, me and Dalton Kelly, man, balls to the wall. Well, balls to the wall by far. But I mean, like I said, there's others. Uh, we got a, I got my, one of my a good friend of mine as well as a brother. His name is Curse. Uh-huh. Uh whew. Oh my God, this mean, vicious. But loving at the same time, I don't want to give it give it away because I want to keep that badass feel. But no, this those are some of the, some of my most. Uh, Joe Joe Blackburn, how can I forget him? Uh, another one of my brothers. Me and him had some epic. We had to actually sit my kids down one after one show and hey, listen, uh, your dad and I we are friends. This is my brother, blah blah blah. Because we we had him crying, front row wow. crying. Yeah, it was so real, and one of the nicest guys in the world. Wow, that's that that's 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 pretty good. If you got your you got your uh, your your your, <laughs> your kids and your family believe it, it's like wow, this yeah, yeah, this looks this is real deal. But having to set your kids down to say, hey. No, it's you know it's entertainment. You know this is <laughs> wow. Dalton That's good. Kelly and, Dalton Kelly and I, yeah, we actually had the locker room clear out. They wasn't sure if it was a work or if we were serious, and they legit thought uh, Dalton Kelly and I were fighting. Like wow. And we and yeah, the promoter was like, "What the hell are you guys doing?" Blah blah blah. We, we looking at each other like. Um, what you talking about? They was like, what, what was going on out there with y'all, man? Like, what happened? He like, we was working. <laughs> we, I mean, we literally worked the whole locker room, bro. I think that's most, most um, one of my most defining moments. Because yeah. we, we literally had to clear the locker room, and we was just working. That's am- <laughs> that's amazing. Have you were working the workers? That that's a, that's pr- that's pretty good, man. When you you get to that. Right there, when you but get it to wasn't. That point. It wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional. We didn't. We didn't try to do it. That's that's how we work each other. Mm-hmm. It wasn't it wasn't intentional at all. Yeah, I do want to mention this right here. I want to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll dive more into the conversation right here. But first, there's a couple things I do want to mention. If you grew up as a kid in the 1980s, or just a fan of 1980s pop culture, then 80 T's is for you. ADT's sells a huge variety of licensed t-shirts featuring characters, movies, TV shows, video games, and music stars from the 1980s through today. They also have great costumes from 80s pulp culture too. ADT's.com sells officially licensed pulp culture t-shirts. As you might guess, their focus is on the 1980s, but do sometimes sell other cool pulp culture related tees. 80s tees has been in business since 2000, meaning they like retro 80s stuff to before it was cool. Follow the link provided in the description section of this episode for more. 80stees.com. Since 1995, HighSpots.com has grown to be the company it is by serving the wrestling fans throughout the world with a great selection of merchandise. HighSpots.com has everything a wrestling fan could want, including the latest WWE and TNA releases, classic wrestling merchandise, and their HighSpots.com exclusive releases. HighSpots.com is the leading online retailer for professional wrestling and mixed martial arts offering autographs, figures, DVDs, apparel, wrestling gear, and even wrestling rings. Their largest clients include WWE, Impact Wrestling, ROH, and AEW. Click on the High Spots logo on the Everett Lee Show page over on PodcastC.net to order. Whether you are a wrestling fan, pro wrestler, or promoter, you can find what you're looking for at highspots.com. 
You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. Do you watch do you watch anything like on TV with like WWE, AEW, NXT? Do you watch do you watch any of that? Uh, honestly, lately I haven't been. I mean, I have the WWE network, and um, I mean, I just I be so tired when I get in, so drained from the sun and stuff. So, like when I get in from work, I'll, I'll come home, I shower, and I eat, and I get on the couch, and I get comfortable, and, and I mean, Doctor Snooze be calling me at seven thirty, sometimes eight o'clock. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only reason why I'm up now this late is because I talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I won't. I won't keep you. I won't keep you up any, you know, much much longer here. But um, just um, like wrestling nowadays compared to when you started out, how what difference can you tell? What what difference can you tell with how it is now compared to when you first started out? What's different and what's the same? Well, I was a late bloomer. I think, um, I, well, I, I was always told that you never could find um, real friends in this business. You know, there's always there's gonna be backstabbers, blah blah blah. Right. And I found I found that to be different, uh, not true, because some of my best friends I've I was met through this business. Some guys, guys and girls, females that I call family, consider family. You know, will will go to war for in a heartbeat. I have met through this business, so I, I that part of it is true. But there's a lot of backstabbing in it. But I think as far as back then, workers cared more about the stories, uh, cared about the promotion than themselves, trying to get themselves over. Right. It's about trying to build a company, and I not 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 a lot of people, but I have seen where you have some workers are more concerned about getting their stuff in, getting themselves over, don't care how you look as long as they look good. I, I've seen a lot of that as well, and, and that pisses me off because I wasn't trained that way. I wasn't taught the, the ethics of wrestling that way. And it was like you, you're you in it for wrestling, not for yourself. It's not, it's not like what can wrestling do for you, but it's what you can do for wrestling, mm-hmm. you know, to keep up that good name and, and – and I, and I see a lot of people like more concerned about like me. I could care less about wins and losses, or, or, or holding a title. But my main objective and goal was to go out there, give 150 percent of yourself, and to, to to those fans that keep them coming back, to keep them on the edge of the seats. I mean, that's what I was accustomed to watching on TV, and in ring action. It was more about that. I could care. If we had a, the match of the night, if we could be curtain jerkers. Um, again, Don Kelly, like I say, my mentor, my one of my best friends, we would have a match, and we would say top that. It got to a point where we had we had the main event because you wasn't going to do anything to top that. You would be a fool to have us curtain jerk. Yeah. Because you know we put so much into it because it's about the fans. We right. care who lost, won or lost. Mm-hmm. And, Sometimes I, I don't see a lot of that these days. You know, like you see guys, oh, I got to win, or just want to get themselves over, and not care about the business. Right. Do you feel? <clears throat> excuse me. Do you feel that nowadays, with certain with with certain workers, certain talent, that when they get out there, it's all high spot, high spot this, high spot that. Do you feel that there's too much of that? nowadays too like like you said story and yeah. you know, developmental you you feel there's like too many high spots because i see that at, like from a fan point of view i see that as too, yeah. too many um, yeah it's a, it's a lot of that and then, then but then again um, like the, all the ones that i've been to at you you got you have a balance but yeah there is a lot of what we call spot monkeys mm-hmm it's a, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of that. I mean, and to me, once I see that, I just I'm lost. I lose total interest because you got to give stuff time to register and let the fans understand what's going on. I mean, it, like once again, it's about the fans, right? And and drawing them in, making them, making. Um, 
I was talking to a, a worker, and a great guy, Johnny Z. Great guy, I love him. And I was talking with him, and I was like, listen, bro, the more you make those fans work, the less you got to do, and I guarantee you, you will be over big time. Involve the fans. Let the fans do all the work for you. I, I, I did a match with James Morrison down at House of Lucha and uh, Newport Richie. The top, did a 12, 15-minute match, took three bumps, and had one of the best matches of the night. Three bumps in the whole match. Why? Yeah. Because we involved the fans. We let, are you, Yes, another great worker. But involve those guys, involve the fans. Let them do all the work for you. You know, it, it's not that hard. It's not about me. It's about the fans. Once they, I think if they grasp that mentality, the, the shows will be better. The matches will be better. Right, right. That's 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 amazing. That's the second time I've heard the heard that today. Uh, three bumps, and you had one of the best matches here. I I believe yeah. I was talking to. Actually, I was talking to uh, Thump, Thumper Chapman today, actually, and he, he brought that up. Mm -hmm. And that's the second time I've heard that today. That's amazing, man. Uh, if you can actually yeah. you actually do that and get the fans in there and just you get three moves in, and that's pretty much it. And I was talking to a friend about, about it one time, and he said there, there's there been matches where the crowd is so invested into the match that exactly right yeah. even even they're 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 cheering and booing even before they a lock up and then when they lock up yeah the place the roof blows off and then they they unlock and the, the crowd's still going they got the crowd in the palm of their hands and it's like they can take exactly. them anywhere they want and i i can only think of one match that i've actually seen that come to mind which uh would have to be um I think it was WrestleMania 27, The Rock versus John Cena. The crowd, man, they had the crowd. Yeah. Before they could even lock up, the crowd was already tearing, coming out of their, coming out of the seats. <laughs> you know. Exactly. Exactly. If you can, like I said, if you can get them, if, if you get the fans like emotionally invested into that, may he rest in peace. Um, a guy named D.V. Brandon was one of the best heels you could ever step in the ring and with. And I mean, the guy, he was a big guy too, but he moved like a lightweight. Right. That, that's what was so amazing about him. He moved like a lightweight. And he would have those fans eating out of his palm of his hands. And he hardly did crap. And one of, one of the nicest guys, he took care of you. Whoever his opponent was, he took care of you. He made sure you were okay and, and, and never did anything too much crazy, but the fans, oh my God. It, all you had to do was punch him and the, the, they would explode. Go nuts. Wow. He, he had that much hatred from the fans. But I, outside of the ring was, I mean, I, I would have to literally talk to some of the fans and be like, listen, no, he's really a great guy. Don't tell him I told you, but no, he's really a great guy. You can't. They hated him just that much from his in-ring work and his mouthpiece. Wow. That's that's yeah. amazing, man. That is. Oh yeah. That is. So you, when when knockout when knockout wrestling announces the uh, next show, which should be coming up here soon, I think. Um, boiling point. Yeah, boiling point. You gonna be ready for that one? Yeah. Yeah. Am I? <laughs> when I came out my mother's womb, I was ready. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and. and, and, and <laughs> and what better title, Boiling Point, because my opponent is going to be Samuel we'll C. That's going to be good. And he's going to find out. It's not. No, it's not going to be good for him. It's oh, going to be yeah. good for me, but not for him. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he's going to find out what's it like when you stick your hand in that fire. Right. He's going to find out how hot it is. So Boiling Point is a fitting title. For next month's show, when I face Sammy, we'll see. Now, oh man, I got goosebumps thinking about it. Woo! <laughs> it's gonna man. be good. It's gonna be good. I actually got oh, to call man. one of his. Uh, I got to call that tag match. That um, I yeah. don't know when they'll be putting that out there. Knockout will, but I got to call that tag match there with Controversial Inc. and Society of Sin, and we saw that 
we saw the fallout on that one there. But Samuel C, yeah. man, he he's pretty he's pretty good. He's pretty good in the ring. He has There's he has not, some really good good work there. I'm I'm not oh very. I'm not gonna take anything from him. Yeah. Samuel C. If you're not careful, he can beat anybody at any given time if 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 you underestimate him. Mm-hmm. But his cockiness is what's gonna get his heads bashed in, and probably him a broken bone. Because when I when I step through those ropes, because I can't get him before before I come out the curtain. So when I step through those ropes, bro, believe me when I tell you, no mercy means just that. No mercy. Wow. No understanding. No nothing. Yeah. No nothing. It's you, it, the, it's you, amazing. It. Uh, I I, you, I love. You're gonna be thinking. I'm gonna be there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Fenya. <laughs> that's okay, okay, okay man that's okay we're well, excited about this i'm excited because i'm gonna get, i'm gonna be there live i'm gonna be, i'm gonna see it because me and uh chris carnage we're gonna be calling that match oh, live shit. we're gonna call it live I mean, dude uh, <laughs> i'm serious man oh, yeah oh, you're man. gonna have me and chris carnage i'm gonna call. have you scratching your head i'm you're gonna be scratching your head because you're gonna be like is venom a heel or is venom a face because <laughs> The things that I the things that I plan to do to him, I'm gonna to have to repent a thousand times over to make it into heaven. That's all <laughs> I got to say about that. I do I do wanna say this. I I wasn't um I don't know if I mentioned this when we did the uh, double down for uh, knockout wrestling, but I do wanna say congratulations on a successful title defense at Unfinished Business too. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank that. you. You know, I, I and and none of my matches are easy. I mean, so I I don't want to put it out there as things like, oh, I'm just this hell of a tough guy, blah blah blah, which I am. But none of my matches are easy. So for me, I can sometimes sit back and do pat myself on the back and say I made it through because every guy that I faced, I mean, whether it was from Samuel C. the first time to the guy. In the back of the corner, eat popcorn and a hot dog. All my matches, all my title defenses were tough. I never, I never had one easy match at knockout. Right, and so I mean, I I can't wait when I get the footage for that match there to throw the commentary on. I can't wait for that. Uh, and tomorrow I, at this time, as this recording, Wednesday. The uh, I believe the first episode of Knockout TV comes out, and yeah, it's uh, I I don't want to give too too much away on the two matches that uh, me and George Black called. George Black filled in for Chris uh-huh. Carnage because Chris Carnage was out ill at the time, so he was he wasn't was able he? to call commentary with me. So George Black filled in, but okay. I I hope you check it out and in. You know, I, I'd love to get your take on the oh, commentary. You're gonna have to hit me up after you watch it and let me know about the commentary, um, man. <laughs> I will definitely. I will most definitely do that, man. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, knockout. People don't realize it, and, and knockout is on the rise, bro. Knockout is on the rise. They're doing a lot. Of, I mean, we have a great team. Yeah. A great team, and, and they're on the rise. I mean, we have some top-notch guys back there. And then now with you commentating, and you guys are icing on the cake. You guys are okay. icing on the cake. We, we we have our cake and our ice cream, and we're going to eat it. <laughs> now, we got, the, we got some of the best of the best. I know the office. I know not the office at Knockout there did hear the first two episodes with the commentary on it, but they, okay. they heard, you know, myself, Everett Lee, and George Black, who was filling in. But I'll tell you what, Venom. They have not heard Chris Carnage because if they enjoyed what they heard with Everett Lee and George Black, oh, they're going to love yeah. when they hear Everett Lee and Chris Carnage. <laughs> Man, I am looking forward to that. I am so looking forward to that. I'm, yeah. I'm actually looking forward to the, the first couple of episodes. The, the, well, I, well we, we all know what you bring to the table, though, Everett. We already know. We know how you get down. So, I mean... <laughs> Should should we be surprised? I mean, come on, really? Well, you this are is, Everett Lee. 
I, I do appreciate that, man. I do appreciate that. <laughs> and this doing the commentary is new water for me. I'm treading new water. I'm trying something new. And I'm I'm comfortable. Oh, you can see I'm comfortable in front of a mic. And so it's it's oh. second nature to me. So this is pretty much yeah. it's pretty much, you know, just call a match right there in front of, in front. So I'm I'm comfortable in front of the mic. I'm I'm always comfortable in, ah. in front of the mic. My wife sometimes has to drag me away from this mic. The it's like, hey, you got stuff to do here. Hey, you got a daughter, you know. And sometimes it it happens, but you know, it's this is second nature to me. I've been do, as long as I've been doing it. And and, and you you're very passionate about it too, because I mean I can tell the way you talk, your demeanor, you know, sitting here looking at you, it's like you say, it's like second nature. I mean. You probably do it in your sleep. Oh, I could. Uh, as long as I've been doing it. <laughs> Over two hundred episodes, I can do this in my sleep, yeah. man. I can I can do this in my sleep. <laughs> With a couple snores thrown in here and there. <laughs> even even with the tech the technical issues I've I've encountered with video because you know, no video. And then this is straight audio, and the mic went out, my mixer went out, and I switched. It's like, hey, I had this hot mic sitting right here. I'm like, let me switch mics. Boom. I, you see, yeah. I was prepared. I was prepared. And it's just some technical issues, which I'm going to look into and get fixed. But by that time, hopefully when I get this stuff straightened out and worked out, that um, I'll be ready to go for the second or the third episode for uh, – Double down for knockout wrestling. So, this I'm is. This I'm is, excited. Yeah. I'm glad they got you aboard, too. I'm glad you're aboard the knockout train. Uh, you know, like I say, it's a, a major contributor to knockout, and it's some awesome next level ish. If mm -hmm. you feel, if you feel what I'm saying, yeah, next level stuff. So, it I, is. I, it I, is. I'm glad you're aboard, brother. I appreciate that. that I, I definitely do appreciate that. And it's just, you know, this opportunity doing doing this with knockout wrestling, doing the commentary and doing the double down, being able to do that. And just adding that on top of uh, me and Chris Carnage and Craig James running Podcast City Network LLC. It's just that that right there. That's also, too, you know, Podcasting Network has uh, done a mutual partnership with Knockout Wrestling. And we're pretty yeah. much, you know, a sponsor. We're spon we're promoting them. They're promoting us. And just on top of that, running a business. Because this past February, Podcasting Network became an official business. You know how it is when you say, hey, I got a business. Uh, and then people's like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. great. And it's like, no, it's a business we're an llc we yeah. got llc in february and just this past congratulations brother appreciate that thank you and just this past uh, a couple months ago we're actually we're like we it's like yeah we were a business we're an llc we open up a business account and we're offering services to for other you know, to contract outside of what we do here at Podcast C Network. And sometimes it's funny because when people think of when when they see me, because I, I, I'm I out in the front there and they, they see uh -huh. Everett Lee, they think it's a podcast, Everett Lee, Podcast C Network. That's great. But also you got to you got to factor in Chris Carnage and Craig James they both do Final Score, the flagship sports show for Podcasting Network. You gotta you gotta counter there, man, because they're doing a lot behind the scenes. I was talking to Chris today and all the stuff he was lining up with doing stuff for Podcasting Network. And sometimes it, it gets me that people don't realize how much that Podcasting Network is our second job. It's like I have my nine to five job. I come home. I'm working on podcasting network stuff, man. It's like I got all these chats with all their all our wow. clients on podcasting network. They're hitting me up like, "Hey, you know, questions about this tech issue, tech questions about this, tech questions about that." I'm talking with them. They're handing me their new episodes. 
where me, Chris, between me and Chris, we're trying to up keep the website updated, share on social media, and and sometimes people don't realize we have that and we can't be added to doing this or doing that because we got so much going on. And then on top of that, we got families too. I'm raising a three year old and mm-hmm trying to you know spend time with my wife and then chris has four kids and he's trying to you know spend time with his wife and raise four kids and sometimes a lot sometimes that gets you know mixed you know lost the shuffle of everything it and i mentioned to some family and friends it's like yeah you know it's like i became an official business llc it's like oh yeah that's great it's like no like where I live right now in my house, it's like this is the studio and this is like the headquarters of the LLC business, man. <laughs> it's, yeah, wow. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. It is. It you is. Got your plate full. Your plate is full. My plate's full. I am always busy. I'm Mr. No Days Off. <laughs> uh, I like that. I'm, I like I'm, that. I'm, yeah, I'm, I have Mr. No Days Off. <laughs> Sometimes it's like I'm doing business. I'm even doing business in the bathroom, doing business with business. You know, on the phone, <laughs> my wife comes in. I got you, you. I got you. Yeah. What are you doing? It's like I'm having a conference call while I'm doing my business, you know, or something. I'm, you know? While I'm handling my business. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'm, be doing, I'll be doing paperwork in about 15 minutes, so you might want to get out. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I'm walking around a house on phone calls, talking to the shows on Podcasting Network. It's like, hey, what's going on? It's like, hey, I got this new episode day. I'm thinking about this. What do you think? Yeah, go ahead and do that. You know, asking what, me, uh, me and Chris talk, hitting each other up. We're calling each other. We're on three way call conferences. It's just we got so much going on. And sometimes when you mention that to people, they're like. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Hey, how about add this to your plate? It's like, hold up, man. <laughs> yeah. Hold up, yeah. man. You know how hold, up, hold up, swole up. Yeah. Hold up. Yeah. But, <laughs> but we manage. We manage. And yeah. I, I'm almost like, it's kind of like Triple H and Vince McMahon. Or Vince McMahon. There was a rumor that Vince McMahon's, uh, you know what his uh, greatest enemy is? Sleep. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, you, you you can't make no money sleeping. I know. Can't make no money sleeping. Yeah, but I, we... I, I'm curious to I'm curious to find out what what Carnage is going to have to say about Venom, though, because you get it, Venom versus Carnage. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Ah, that's pretty good. Wham! That's pretty good. Wham! That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm curious to see what he got. What are you going to have to say about Venom? He, he, he's going to bring it, man. He is going to bring it because Chris Carnage, I mean, he was, he was a former, he was a former, uh, worker in the ring. He's, he worked, uh, in the ring for a long time. He's been out of action for about seven, seven to eight years, but he worked a very long time in the ring and he injury took him away from the ring and pretty much he never yeah. you know never did return though but that character he kept it going even outside of wrestling and he he's done a lot Sweet. in music Sweet. yeah he's he's done a lot in the music industry i mean he worked with Camden Cruz the Seven Kingdoms which is a band based out of Delan and he was yeah. the voice yeah. and the face of the Delan Rock Metal Festival so He's, oh wow! Yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna bring it to the table with what he does, man. And he has that experience, and that's what he's gonna bring. And I've seen that experience before, up up close and personal. And he can hold his own. And uh, I know he has all good things to say about Venom. He does. <laughs> he he definitely oh. does. <laughs> because I did no, show him. No. I did show him one of your promos. Uh-huh. I I said I said you okay. want to see you want to see what knockout wrestling is. I said, here's the world heavyweight champion. Check out this promo. And you you want to know which promo I showed him? It was about the it was a promo that you cut when you were you were um where where the hell were you at? Um, I think you were you were somewhere. I forget where you were at though. But during the promo, you're talking about the about 
how much you sacrifice and uh, disrespect and earning respect. It was right before the pandemic. Oh, that one. Yeah. That one. He watched okay. that, and he looked at me. He says, uh -huh. wow. He said, what a promo, man. He's like, oh, I can't wait. He was excited. He's like, he's like, I can't. Oh, wow. That's what's up. That's yeah. What's up. <laughs> Yeah, he was excited, man. He he loved that promo. He's like he looked and he's like at that time he was like that I hate to bring it up, what commentary they had um at the time before us. Yeah. Um he uh, I, I showed him I showed him a little bit of that and he wasn't too impressed, but then I said, Here, here's Venom, their world heavyweight champion. Check out this promo. He watched it and he was like, Damn, <laughs> He said, you know, you know, he looked at me. He said, "Hell yeah!" He said, "He cut, <laughs> he said he can cut a promo." I said, "Yeah, he can." Oh wow! Thank he, you, man. Thank yeah. you. I'm, I'm honored. Appreciate it. Yeah, he loved that intensity you brought in your promo, man. He definitely did. <laughs> he, yeah. He and, did. and what was funny though, I, I have to tell a lot of people the Venom character is not too far off from my real life. Well, well, it is now because I'm not that guy anymore. Mm -hmm. But that he's still in there. That guy's still in there. But I, I'm not like that anymore. Be becoming a father and stuff calmed me down a whole lot. But right, yeah, that and and I think that's why it's so believable because it's it's me and a lot of people, a lot of fans can rate, you know. We, we, we're just average, hardworking people who want to be respected for what we do and, and, and what we put out. And, you know, and when you continuously, like I say, being disrespected or whatever, right? you know, we get tired of being a good guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We get tired of being good. So, you know, it, it, it does say in the Bible, an eye for an eye. So, I mean, if it's okay in the Bible, then it's okay here. And that's what <laughs> she going to get. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Jesus forgives me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I've enjoyed this. Just sitting there, just you know, shooting shooting the breeze with you, and you know, talking about wrestling, talking about how you started out, talking about matches, and talking about knockout wrestling, and just again, congratulations on a successful title defense at unfinished business too and boiling points Thanks. coming up i'm looking forward to that i'm oh, looking yeah. forward to calling your match live right there and just seeing oh, man. what's going to happen next man man i'm looking forward to listening to you guys like I'm looking forward to that sunday dinner after church <laughs> yeah so yeah. <laughs> And you know, if you, if people out there, they know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. That Sunday dinner after church, boy. Ooh, yeah. that's a wham, bam, thank you, man. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> well, but I, I, man, I appreciate you, man. Um, like I say, I really I really do in the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys for what y'all doing for, for not only myself, but for Knockout as well. So I'm looking forward to a, a, a long relationship, business relationship and hopefully even longer friendship. Yeah, I I do too, man. I I do appreciate everything that I I've seen that you've done and in the ring with uh, especially with Knockout Wrestling and social media. You're you're on social media. Yeah. Where where can people find more of Venom at on social media? Well, I I only do Facebook and Instagram because uh, you know, like I said, I I do Instagram when I'm taking care of business. You know what I mean? <laughs> or on a lunch break. But uh, Facebook on the Charles Ellison, on the Instagram, uh, uh, Big L44. And I don't do all that other stuff. I leave that for everybody else. All right, I got enough on my plate as it is myself. So, you know, I did only do those two because I can't keep up with everything. Right. That's the that'll make that I'm not as good as you. Put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do appreciate that man and I want to plug this right here Podcast C Network your top source for independent podcasting head over to podcast.net for great content and great shows over on the website hit them up on Facebook Podcast C Network give them a thumbs up and a follow 
send them a tweet over on Twitter at PodcastCNet. Subscribe to their YouTube channel for video podcast over on Podcast City Network and on Twitch, Podcast City Network. If you want more Everett Lee, then hit me up on Facebook. Give me a thumbs up and a follow, Everett Lee Show. Twitter at the Everett Lore Score Lee. Instagram, Everett Lee Show. And audio portions of this podcast and previous release podcast. Head over to YouTube, the Everett Lee Show, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, Podbeam and iHeartRadio. When I need a logo or graphic design done, I use Three Count Design. Three Count Design offers a wide range of graphic design products, video photography, and other forms of media. Everything from t-shirt designs to websites. For more information, head over to Facebook.com slash Three Count Design. That is Facebook.com slash Three Count Design. When I want to kick back a few cold ones with my friends, I head over to City Limits Taproom. City Limits Tap Room has a wide selection of TVs to watch your favorite sports, indoor and outdoor seating, and they are pet friendly. City Limits Tap Room also has food made fresh to order, and the grilled cheese is excellent. I recommend the grilled cheese and the apple pie cider with fries on the side. You can't go wrong with that, baby. For more information for upcoming events, head over to facebook.com slash city limits tap room. Thank you, Venom, for coming on the Everett Lee Show. And had a blast, as always. Love talking with you. And that's it for the Everett Lee Show. Everyone, thank you for tuning in and downloading this audio portion of the this podcast. And I'm Everett Lee. We'll see you again next week for another episode of the Everett Lee Show. Peace. Peace, home. Get it. <laughs>